So let's look at how correlation and convolution are related in digital communication systems. And we're going to look at random processes. These are capital letters, X and Y, and this relates to correlation of random processes, and also functions, little x and little y, and this is convolution. So let's look a bit more at the cross-correlation. So if our processes are stationary, then our autocorrelation function is defined as being the expectation of the random variable x at time t times the random variable y at an offset time, t minus tor. Uh, this is the definition of cross-correlation when these are random processes. And if we set tor equal to zero, then this is equal to multiplication of x of t times y of t. Again, this is the expectation of random processes. Now, if our system is ergodic, uh, then we can replace ensemble averages, like this one, with time averages. And for more details on this, see some videos on ergodic processes and random processes. But what this means is we can replace this average, so this integral here over the possible outcomes of these random variables, which are part of the random processes, and we can replace it with a time average, where what we do is we look at one realization of x and one realization of y, and we multiply them together and integrate over time and we do it for minus infinity to infinity. So this is if our system is ergodic. So if it's tor equals zero, and here if it's ergodic, then we get this expression here for our cross correlation, where we simply multiply two realizations of these random processes. Now let's contrast that with convolution. So convolution, the formula for convolution, zt, if we were to convolve x and y, is an integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of tor times y of t minus tor d tor. This is just the standard definition for convolution. And we can see these two equations are similar. They both involve integrals from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, one of them is simply x times y, and the other one is x times y but with this offset. Okay, so they are very similar but not the same. So what, how do they relate in digital communications? How do we use them in digital communication systems? Well, let's look at what we're going to do in a receiver of a digital communication system. And if we were to build what's called a correlator, it's based on this kind of thinking. Now, one of our functions is going to be the rand a random function, and this is going to be our received signal. So this is, let's call this RT. So this is our received signal here. Let's draw a line across here. Above the line are the formulas. Below the line are our digital communication system. So we've got RT being received, and it is a random process because it's from data, random data functions. And we're going to multiply this by our basis function, uh, which we're calling F of T. Okay, so R of T might have come from two different digital communication symbols, for example. One might be a function F of T, and the other might be minus F of T, for example, if it was binary communications. Okay, and then we're going to, in the correlator, so-called correlator receiver, we're going to add up the outcome of this multiplication uh, between zero and capital T, because we're sending digital data over capital T time instances. We add that up, and then every time we get to capital T, or when, if we're just doing it for the first bit, for example, when we get to capital T, we're going to look at the outcome here. So what is the outcome from this correlator receiver? Okay, so, well, it's exactly in the form of this expression here, coming from the cross-correlation, except in this case, uh, slightly uh, not matching with here, but we still call it a correlator receiver. The signal here is random, but the signal here is a fixed function. It's one of our binary in, or binary or emery uh, symbols, and we're, we're sending it for capital T of time. So the output here, if we write down the equation for it here, is zero to capital T because it's being added up over zero to capital T, and we're assuming that FT only exists between zero and capital T. So it might be if it was a square pulse that we were sending, then it might look like this F of T, uh, or some other shape. Uh, but it's zero to capital T. Okay, so here we've got the equation here, which is going to be RT times F of T, 
and add it up over t time t between 0 and capital T. And I'm just going to make a small point here, and we'll, hopefully we'll see why in a minute, uh, but I've, I often like to make sure, make the point that in an integral like this, the variable we're, we're integrating over is just a variable. And we can replace that, and it would still be exactly the same formula. So let me just do it here. It might seem trivial, but um, I think for those who are not quite understanding this at this point, uh, it might be an important point to know about. So I can replace the t with alpha, for example. So instead of integrating over t, I can integrate over alpha as long as I replace all the t's with alpha. Okay, it's not important. The point is, it's not important that t represents time because when it's in this integral, it's just the variable that you're integrating over. So you may as well be integrating over alpha, for example. So what about the convolution receiver? Uh, so this is called a matched filter. So if you match, if you if you convolve with a function that matches your input signal, it's called a matched filter. And so what do we have in this case? Well, we have uh, our signals coming in, RT. So instead of doing the correlator over here, we're going to do a matched filter with H of T, with an impulse response H of T. And then we're going to sample that at T equals capital T. Okay, so this is uh, a general filter in a receiver. What if our HT actually is matched to our function? that we've used to send our signal with, whether it's a square pulse or whichever type of pulse it is. If it's match filter, then HT, oh, well, let's first of all write down the formula for this uh, outcome here. Okay, so the formula for this is gonna be the integral from zero to T. This is the, the outcome that's just before the sampler here. It's gonna be zero to T, it's a convolution, so it's RT convolved with H of T. So it's H, so it's, sorry, R tor, Sorry, we're going to use this formula up here, r tor, h of t minus tor. And we're doing the integral d tor. Okay, so this is what the signal is at this point here. Okay, now if we're going to use a matched filter, then we're picking h of t equals f of capital T minus little t. And this is called the matched filter. And we've got a, a, a video on the match filter for more information on that. So, okay, what we need in our function is h of little t minus tor. So, and what is that? h of little t minus tor. Well, it's the same as h of t, where you replace the t with little t minus tor. So it equals f of capital T minus t plus tor. Okay, so we've just replaced, in this equation here, we've just replaced the t with t minus tor. Okay, so we get this function here. Now we put this into the formula there, and we get the output from the matched filter. Now the matched filter output is now zero, and we're sampling it at little t equals capital T. So it's from zero, oh, let me just write it one step before then. Zero to tor, uh, sorry, zero to t, r of tor times f, of capital T minus little t plus tor, d tor. And now we can see what we're going to do. So this is what we're putting into. We're doing the match filter implies that this is the output here just before sampling. And then if you sample at little t equals capital tor, a uh, capital T, then this equals zero to capital T, r of tor. And this little t here is evaluated at capital T, so you've got capital T minus little t here, which is zero. So you're left with F of tor, d tor. And now hopefully you can see why I made the point over here about this being, it doesn't matter that's a little t, it could be an alpha, because also on this side, when we use the match filter, our convolution filter receiver, which has a quite a different structure to the correlation receiver, but it comes to exactly the same formula. So at that sampling time, it gives you exactly the same formula as over here. We could replace that alpha with tor, or we could replace this tor with alpha, just like we could replace the t with alpha. So hopefully you can see these expressions are the same. And so this is the, how you can get the same answer from two different receiver structures, one coming from the idea of correlation, the other coming from the idea of convolution. But at, the important thing is, if you pick this convolution to be a matched filter, and if you look at the outputs just at the sampling times from both sides, just at the sampling times, the functions are different, but at the sampling times, they are identical. And so with the match filter, 
the correlation receiver, the correlator receiver, is the same as the match filter receiver. So don't forget to like this, this video, it helps others to find the video, and subscribe to the channel for more videos.